Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and today is Derby Day in Kentucky. And on Derby Day, we wear our hats. Some of us go to the track. Others of us make purchases for Derby Day. Let's look at what I bought. What I bought I consider art. Now you might have been a little bit confused if you looked at my thumbnail and you might have thought that I bought a real horse, but I didn't. I bought a horse fabric panel. Isn't it gorgeous? And I thought this is the perfect horse project for Derby Day for a quilt. Now, if you don't like panels, you still need to stay because I may convince you that when you have something this beautiful that is the center of your project, that maybe you should like panels. If you love panels, you definitely should stay. And if you're on the fence, join me because we're going to make this an even bigger piece of art. I'm going to take my hat off and we're going to get down to business. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a border around this whole piece of fabric and I found this Waverly at Walmart that matches beautifully. I'm thinking I'll cut a two inch strip and then I will put it all the way around. From there, I have a free pattern that is from Fat Quarter Shop that I'm going to use, but maybe not exactly the way they used it. The free pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop, which I will leave a link to that pattern in the description below, is essentially a courthouse steps block. Their quilt when they were done was only hmm, 37 by 50 something. I want mine bigger. So I think instead of using two and a half inch strips, I am going to use three and a half inch strips. So that should get me out faster. They also used the same fabric on each side for all the borders and the same fabric on the top and bottom for all the borders. These fabrics are coordinates that go with the Northcott panel and this collection is called Spirited. Here you've got kind of a sketchy horse with the pretty green blue color and some yellow. This is a coordinating solid and I'm going to be using air quotes when I say solid. So I need to get to cutting three and a half inch strips. I'm just going to cut three and a half inch strips out of all of these and I'm going to put it on the design wall so that I can get an idea of how I want to organize it. Wait! I almost forgot the best part about this whole project. The border. It's gorgeous. This is the top of my border. So I'm just laying my ruler down along the edge of the top and cutting. The way this fabric is, if I cut it from selvage to selvage, then if I were to put this down the side, my horse heads would be going sideways. So this is a directional fabric. I want this to go on the sides. I may want some of it to go on the top, but I definitely know I want it to go on the sides. So instead of cutting from selvage to selvage, I am going to have to fold it a different way. And as much as this pains me, I actually pressed the entire yard of fabric so that when I did cut it, it would be nice and straight and I wouldn't have to worry about having any jagged edges because of creases. I should probably iron this too, but I just can't take any more pressing. 
I'm becoming way too mature for my liking. So as you can see, I've been playing around with exactly how I wanted these fabrics ordered. Sometimes you surprise yourself. So if you just focus on this side, to me, this just flows. If you look at the other side, there's something about this fabric, I don't know if it's because it's lighter, but this does not just flow. Let me get the rest of this cut out, let me throw it up there on the design wall, and see if you think I've made the right choice. Since I am sewing this like a courthouse steps block, the first thing I want to do is I want to add this side and this side to this panel. So let me get those sewn and we'll bring it back to the design wall and see what's next. So I've added these borders and I put the side borders on first and then I put the top border and the bottom border. So that is how you add borders on a courthouse steps block. So now I'll add the side borders here and here and then I will add the top borders and then we'll be ready to put on our mitered border. So I've put my quilt together. And now I'm ready for this awesome border. And even though it would be perfectly fine to do the borders as I normally do them, I want this particular border to be mitered. It just has a special look. And I think with these horses, I'm really going to appreciate it more. So what I have done is I've put on the first border, but I'm going to share with you how we put on mitered borders. Have I done mitered borders before? I have not. Will it be a success? Let's go find out. But before we do that, I want to say thank you for watching my channel, Patty Mac, Justin, Ellen, and Jackie. For a mitered border, you may want to grab one of your pens that is either air erasable or heat erasable. You are going to put whatever it is you're bordering face up. You are going to put your border face down and you are going to have excess on either side of your border. In order to figure out how much excess you need past the edge of your project that you are mitering, you measure the width of your border. And here I have just over 10 and a half. And then you add an inch to that. I'm going to add two inches just to be safe. Right here, I'm going to mark 11 and a half because that is where I need to attach this to the edge of my project on the first side. So let's take that over here. And you can see I've already got the side borders on. I am going to use pins for this. Shocking, I know. I have this little square ruler because I need to do some marking on either end. I'm going to take my little square ruler, which I have now hidden. <laughs> there it is. So right here is where these two pieces meet. So I want to measure a quarter inch in from each place. So I'm going to put my ruler here and a quarter inch is here and there is a quarter inch here. So I'm going to just draw a line. Maxine is going to help me. So right here in the center of this mark is where I want to stop sewing. 
let's do this on the other side with more of a close up. All right, so right here, I can just do, make a little finger press mark where the edge of the panel is. So if I go a quarter inch from the edge of the panel, math, it's a struggle. Okay, so here is a quarter inch from the other way. So right here, seems awfully small. So right here is where I want to stop. Let me sew this on and then we'll do next steps. So I have my corners on my project and I did backstitch. So when I take these two borders, so here's where I've stopped them at a quarter inch away from the corner of the panel. So if I put these two borders together, which is the way they're going to go together, if I pull them, see how you see this right here? It's almost like they get pulled in the way that your fabric needs to be folded. So I'm pulling a little here, pulling a little here, and I get this crease right here. So I believe that that is the crease that I need in order to determine where I need to draw my line. All right, so here, this is the fold where we're folding the quilt at an angle. This is the border. You can see here is the corner of the panel. Now we want to fold these up. We want to make sure this little corner is not going to show on the outside. So we want to kind of push him out of the way. We're going to put a pin in it because you want to start sewing after the bulk. Then what we're going to do is take a straight edge across here. Because of the way we're cutting it, that's why it takes extra fabric to do a mitered corner. And as you can see, I have just enough fabric with this one border, this guy right here. I got lucky. I did not get so lucky on the other side, so I'm going to have to take some of this leftover border and do a little adding. And the first time you do this, it will probably not work out perfectly, and that is okay. I think the more practice you get, the better you get at these mitered borders. And I'm going to start right here because I can feel this bulk right after that bulk. I'm going to use my hand wheel to make sure that my needle goes in exactly where I want it to. Once you have put your mitered borders on and you've unfolded it to make sure that everything looks okay, then you're going to have to trim the edge where you've stitched along this diagonal, but you've got all this leftover over here. So I want to place my ruler where my quarter inch mark is on the seam. And then you're going to take your rotary cutter, if you can find it. And there you've got a nice clean seam that you can press. You do not want to press until after you're done sewing your mitered border corner on. My quilt top is complete. I am so pleased. This turned out so pretty and it's very big. I mean, I don't know that it's huge, but for me, it's big. So here is my quilt top. I have actually quilted it. I have not bound it. 
I put a flannel, no I didn't, I put a fleece on the back. I did a horseshoe meander. I am looking forward to cuddling up with this on the sofa. I believe what I'm going to do is wrap my fleece around the front and I would like to find like a galloping horse stitch in order to secure it. I thought that would look kind of cool. Mitering your borders makes for a lovely corner. I am not perfect at it. It will take me probably a few times and even if yours isn't perfect, if you try this mitered border, don't worry about it. It's okay. You will eventually get it. I promise. I really want to thank you for watching. I hope that I have convinced those who were maybe on the fence about the panel that panels are fun to work with and they make beautiful quilts. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Till next time. Other of the <laughs> essentially the pattern from the free quarter from the free quarter shop <laughs> in the no I won't I'm having trouble here people do over four coincidences <laughs> why can't I think of that word.